listeners, and welcome to Night Vale. Hello, you've tuned into the Glass Cannon Network, where we are doing a playthrough of the new upcoming Welcome to Night Vale role-playing game, Night Vale, the town in the desert where the bazaar is commonplace. And with me, I have four incredible actor, role-player, writer, producer, creative content creators, Please welcome Paula Deming, Mary Lou, Clinton Trucks, and Matthew Capitacasa. Yay! 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 They Hello. said it couldn't be done, but here we are doing it. <laughs> here yep. we are. The haters said this would never happen, and the haters were dead wrong. Dead uh, wrong. And so, they're going to hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the haters hate everything. Uh, sorry, haters. So, uh, this is the Welcome to Night Vale role-playing game. It is a, an upcoming game from Renegade Game Studios. And uh, uh, just to raise awareness, the backer kit launches on September 17th. If you'd like to get your hands on this game, if you'd like to be updated on the development of this game, go to the URL here in the video description and you'll receive updates uh, about the Welcome to Night Vale role-playing game based on the legendary podcast that I think has been going over a legendary. decade. Since I think how like 2011? Uh, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So how many of its 240-some-plus episodes have you guys listened to? To oh. 20, maybe? 220? No, no, no I, I'm sorry, 20. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to like <laughs> three. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So you uh a casual listener, a casual, casual listener. Casual. I would call myself a filthy casual, yes. Filthy uh, casual. I mm -hmm. me too. Me too. You don't have I, to be filthy. You can be a, a squeaky <laughs> clean casual. Yeah, but it's, I'm in New York I and it's we're in a heat wave. It's numbers. disgusting. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anything you do is filthy. Yeah. Um, I've watched zero, but that that will not surprise or listen to zero because, but that will not surprise people because of my hard um, no podcast policy, uh, with that I'm famous for. I, I do not listen to podcasts. There are yes. too many, and I can't listen to all of them, so I listen to none of them. That's, Mary Lou only I... listens to cassette tapes of old timey radio shows. <laughs> that's right. Like that's right. The exactly. Shadow and Amos and Andy. Yeah. Uh, well, do you feel uh, at all? You know, complicit in the glut of co podcast content, given that you were on several of our podcasts. Yeah, no, I don't. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking, but I do not. Great. Uh, I do reaction content, and I watch no other reaction content because why? Mm. Is it strange to participate in a thing that you don't necessarily understand the appeal? Not of? at all. Oh, not okay. at all. <laughs> I. I understand, oh, like I understand the appeal of it's podcasts. Your, it, it's your job. I just, like, I don't want it. It's your job. My mom worked in the <laughs> ER as a nurse. She didn't, in her spare time, go and like help someone suture a wound, you know? <laughs> Do you she know how few of the Stop. hours of TV that I've produced that I've watched? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't mm. watch something that you worked on. You just can't. Yeah. It's mm -mm. too. Well, you're too I, close I, to it. Let me just say this. If you are interested in Night Vale, go just put Welcome to Night Vale in your browser. They have a beginner's guide so you can jump around to the episodes that you know are kind of handpicked because uh, getting a handle on all the mythology of such a long running show can be a little tricky, but it is a great nerd uh, wormhole to dive into. And if you're not familiar, that's OK. You can still play the game. The only the only intro to the setting I would give you here to start out is it's really a setting where anything can happen. And you'll see when we get into our character descriptions, just how strange the setting is. Uh, I want to just briefly go over the core mechanic and then let's get, let's get started. Mm. Okay. Ready? Great. So the core mechanic, you can look at all of your character sheets is that you are always going to roll a D 20. And then another die based on the appropriate skill. So if you have D4 in a skill, you'll roll a D20 and a D4, and you'll add them together and see if you meet the oh. difficulty number that I've set. Okay? Got However, it. if you have a specialty in a skill, which I believe, for example, Paula's character, Noah Davies, mm -hmm. has a specialty in their technology skill, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? 
I have, yes, theoretical. Is theoretical. My so if you are dealing with theoretical technology, you get, you get a, a special advantage when you're rolling. And what that means is you roll the D20, you roll the skill die, and then you roll every die under that skill die. So what is your technology? That's so cool. What is your technology die? A D6. So you'd also roll a D4 and a D2. And then you would take the highest of those to add to oh, that's your D20. Cool. Yeah, that's if that's you have a specialty. Cool. Um, and that's the basic way it, it works. If we get into a combat, then you'll be rolling might or targeting based on the weapon that you're using. That weapon has a static amount of damage that it does. And uh, you'll be trying to hit difficulty numbers that are called defenses so if you're trying to hit someone with say i I believe that our friend uh our friend uh jeremy stackhouse matthew's character has a fire axe then he might try to hit an enemy's defense and that defense might be 15 so he's rolling his might plus his uh his d20 and trying to hit a 15 to hurt them that's kind of how that would that would work um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should tell you. I think that's that's good to start out and, and just to ask questions. There are no dumb questions. Uh, and uh, and also understand that even more so than in a traditional role-playing game, I don't know why I'm calling it traditional. This is just such a weird setting that that other role-playing games become traditional in, ex- in comparison. <laughs> you, you can really go be out there with your suggestions, ideas, strategies, uh, and characters. Um, and we'll learn. Are you learn going a little- to regret asking me to be in this game? <laughs> well, <laughs> or did know. you know I'd be very well suited? A game where yeah. you're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, Paula's going to be like, limits? "Can I find a secret passage using my performance skill?" Uh, <laughs> and, and because that is so like something that would happen in Night Vale, I really actually might say yes. Yes. So- <laughs> oh, I can't wait. If you have a good enough reason. <laughs> I would like to go ahead and start playing. Are you ready, players? Ready, I think Jared. So. Ready. Yeah, I think so. You will introduce your characters in the midst of playing in a short amount of time. But right now, I would like to take you to a cute little suburban home. It has beautiful little lawn gnomes out in the yard. <gasps> This being a desert town, there's no actual grass, but the, the lawn gnomes are sitting in a barren desert landscape. It has a little fountain, uh, again, completely dry, but cute and ornate. You are inside. You've come up the little little cobbled sidewalk through the door, and you're sitting in the living room where there are doilies all all over everything, and there are Hummel figurines lined up on the shelves, and there are uh, many photos of a dog. All over all the walls, you see photos and even caricatures and illustrations of a corgi. And this corgi dog in some photos has a monocle or a top hat. (laughs) Oh my God, that's so quirky. (laughs) So we're at Ross Bryant's house. (laughs) And some of the the photos, the dog is wearing a little little, uh, bow tie. There are different versions of fanciness. There's like a, there's like a, a, an old South uh, version of the corgi, and there's like is there a one with like Victorian a Shakespearean London? Ruff? What's that? Yeah, one with like a Shakespearean a ruff. ruffle. Yes, an Edwardian mm-hmm. or Elizabethan yeah, version yeah, of yeah. the corgi. And you is know, the corgi in its various costumes gendered. Uh, the corgi is gendered. Yes, the corgi is gendered. He him. He him. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, and you happen to know because you are a neighbor that this corgi is Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. Um, (laughs) Got it. (laughs) The corgi of your good neighbor, she's in her 70s. She's currently serving you tea. Her shaky hands are pouring the tea all over the tray. Uh, Stella Sterling. Stella Sterling, Sterling is the owner of Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. And she has called you here because she needs your help. Lord Arfington is missing. <gasps> oh, no. I know. He's always on time for, for afternoon tea. 
and he, yesterday he didn't show up for his tea and biscuits. Even though I keep pouring it, and she pours tea into a dog bowl. Oh, oh that's devastating. Um, I'm uh, worried he... about him, because as you know, he is a fancy little gentleman, and he's, he's not used to surviving out in the world. He needs his creature comforts. He needs to be in, 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 in civilized society. He lives in a society. He does live in a society. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was uh, uh, how, I don't know actually I have no idea what my character says what was uh, Lord Arfington wearing that's a great question Jeremy by the way would you describe your character Jeremy Stackhouse Matthew yes Jeremy Stackhouse is quite tall he's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, if he's on honest driver's license uh, he uh, w- clear, like, it was is well built but has let himself go a little bit he's got a little bit of a paunch He's got a uh, he's got long hair that's right now tied back in a ponytail, and he's wearing the coverall uh, emblazoned with the logo of the cable and uh, a cable provider that services Night Vale. And Stella Sterling says, "I'm so grateful that you have decided to help me with this, even though you just came to install the cable an hour ago, and we've never met." Um, I'm hap- we're always happy to serve, ma'am. Lord Arfington was wearing a derby hat and a little necktie. I love how we're taking notes. (laughs) We're all taking notes. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing keyboards going. I'm like, they're taking notes on this. (laughs) Yeah. Derby hat and necktie. Mm -hmm. Derby hat and necktie. Already, here's what we've got. Yeah, okay. baby. Derby uh, had a necktie. I just love right. that we were all like, mm hmm. That could be oh, yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. Like to, I'd like to thank you for only noting the attractive qualities of Jeremy Stackhouse. I decided I don't need to note that you have a paunch, but I will remember I wrote remember the word it. paunch. <laughs> 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 Guys, it's so weird. I don't have notes for this adventure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid that his derby hat will get soiled. Oh, that would be terrible. As a mom, I totally get it. I'm Peg. I'm a sentient patch of haze. <laughs> um, so I'm just sort of like an area of the air that is like sparklier and a little more opaque um, than other patches of air. Um I am, I, you know, I'm a mom as well, and I don't, I don't really understand when people say that pets aren't like children. They are. I've had countless children. I literally cannot count uh, how many. Probably billions. Um, unclear, but I am. Um, I, I understand. From mom and, to mom, we're gonna find your baby. And Peg, <laughs> Peg, as you know, I did have children of my own who are still alive, who I never cared for. But no. I love Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. Yeah, Arfy, of course. As He's a the real only one know who that matters. Some kids to are me. better than others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some kids have bad vibes, and Arfy, he really had great vibes. Lord Arfington Wigglesworth, please don't call him Arfy. That's okay. not his name. Okay. Okay. Uh, starting him. to feel Lord. very awkward about this. Uh, Increasingly passive aggressive exchange. You see, kind of standing in like the corner of the room, an average height, uh, average build uh, person. Uh, this is Noah. Uh, and they are uh, wearing like a button up. It's buttoned all the way up and um, holding their teacup, but they kind of like don't know how, like, do they hold it? Like, th- no, do they hold it? Like, oh, but maybe they, they're kind of like constantly shifting how they're holding the teacup because they're not quite sure. Um, and they go, <clears throat> uh, does uh, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth uh, normally uh, come to a specific call? Or how do you, how do you normally have Lord Arfington Yes. Uh, uh, obey. Um, yes, uh, usually I do this, and she uh, kind of stumbles toward the door and opens it and says, Hear ye, hear ye! Solicitations and salutations! 
please welcome the Lord of Kibble and Bones, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. And uh, no one shows up. It seems like she's shouting into an empty street. And she turns and says, when he doesn't come, I feel a little crazy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Understandable. Yeah. Totally understandable. Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's tough. And as you guys take this in, the sort of tea in your cups begins to ripple Jurassic Park style. Uh, and sort of walking around the living room, taking things in, is Cormac O'Sullivan, uh, attorney at law, uh, who is a uh, 12 foot tall, uh, 2,500 pound, five headed dragon, uh, uh, various shades of white, uh, and <laughs> Uh, the head on the extreme left, the ivory head, whips around to the front and says, and uh, when was he last seen? Uh, exactly. Have you filed a report already? Um, yesterday. And um, I did go to the sheriff to file a report, but they just asked me a lot of questions about my diet uh, and exercise regimen and contacts among the local underworld, which I, I didn't understand. I uh, and, and now there's mm-hmm. been a man following me for several days. Uh, ever since yesterday, actually. Sorry. And she looks out the window and goes, there he is. And you look and there's a man in a black car with binoculars looking into the house. Okay. That's fun. Uh, I feel like it's unrelated to Lord Arfington Wigglesworth's disappearance. Interesting that you led with the Lord Arfington and not the guy in the car. Again, I think they're unrelated. Um, Mostly he's an annoyance. Will you get out of here? I don't want you watching me. You old man in a car, you get out of here. (laughs) He won't move. I see that. I see that. Good yelling, though. Yes. Um, did, did e- do either you or Lord Arfington have any um, enemies? Lord <laughs> Arfington Wigglesworth is his entire name. Well, n- no enemies to speak of. Uh, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth was a uh, proud uh, pup. Certainly. Uh, some might even say supercilious to some extent. But... Uh, never cruel, and uh, uh, I didn't allow him to associate with strays or cats. And then she uh, kind of shudders at the very mention of cats. Oh, <laughs> okay. We don't like kitty cats. Got it. Wow. So, um, uh, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth uh, displayed a certain sense of superiority. Uh, did he ever display that sense of superiority toward you? Uh, conflict, I've been told, is normal between people and beings, especially those who live together. So, did anything happen between the two of you that might have motivated Lord Arfington Wigglesworth to not return when you call? Statistically, if he was killed, you were most likely to have done it. Oh, don't say that that he was killed! Statistically. Uh, he, uh, she looks into, uh, Noah's eyes and says, We got along fine. Except sometimes I would look at him and I would realize that he longed for the life of an uncivilized dog to run along green pastures, defecating where he pleased, free of his petticoats and his top hats, to become a savage wolf, unbridled by any sort of rules or society. Yes, that instinct was within him, and it was eating him alive. But hasn't every mom felt that way (laughs) about their precious baby? (laughs) Right? Yes. Yes. You understand. You understand. I understand. Oh, I get it. It's rough being a mom, an empty nester. Do you ever let. So he ran away, probably. What? I was just wondering if you ever let Lord Arfington Wigglesworth out to defecate. 
Perhaps. No. Like um, you say. He uses this, and she takes you around a corner to where there's like a tiny gold toilet. Hmm. See. Okay. So normal. Okay. Um. Well, I'm perhaps. Gonna, maybe we check the yard and the yes, environment. Yes, I was. Step one. Jeremy, I was just about to uh, suggest the same thing. Yeah, you are welcome to look there, but he's not out there. I can stay here with you, Stella, and and help comfort you. Well, I was hoping you would. would, I was hoping you would all look. I I would look myself, but I'm not as I'm not as fast on my feet as I used to be. But I sure I I did get these flyers made, and she uh, goes to her kitchen counter, uh, where there is a gigantic stack of yellow flyers that say, you know, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth, missing for 21 hours. Mm. And they've all been tea-stained to look like they're an old time. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. All, they're all old-timey. Old with pill, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, they look like wanted posters from the eight, uh, 19th century, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe we could also talk to the guy out front just to see what's I mean, up for you. Yes. Mrs. I think Sterling we should start. I think that's a great avenue, and we should start seeing seeing if we can uh, uh, have 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 an investigation. Hmm. Very well. Thank you so much for helping. Would anyone like a granola bar before you leave? Oh yes. Um. Yeah. And and uh, Peg is gonna like reach out like an arm of haze. Just like a little branch of it. Yeah. Um, the granola bar sinks into the soft, <laughs> uh, loose molecule uh-huh. general vibe of your haze. Thank you so much. And she's just sort of going to like put it in her haze and it's just going to sort of float around there. <laughs> Uh, please feel free to add granola bar to your uh, to your Great. equipment. Just a loose, Great. dusty nature's best, just floating uh-huh. to and fro. My haze. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, and you may, you can begin your search, your investigation. So I think you said mm. you were going to start in the yard. Um, that's fine if you'd like to do that. Um, just let me know what you're doing, and we might have some skill rolls. Well, mm. Noah will before going outside take their lab coat they had hung up on the on the coat tree, hat tree, coat tree thing, you know, those and uh Our coat yes. and, and 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 put it on um and uh also take a granola bar and put it in their pocket and uh yeah, and go outside. Okay. Uh the backyard is like the front yard, a barren desert wasteland um but you do see um a little a little um cottage for the dog um it's like a dog house but it's it looks a little bit more like a uh british lord summer home mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Or cottage uh, core. there is uh in place of like a big old tree there's a huge cactus <laughs> um could I roll alertness to see if I notice anything unusual um, or? I don't see why not. That sounds good. Why don't you try that? All right. So I have a D4 in alertness. So I'm going to roll my D20 plus my D4. Okay, great. And just give you, I just give you, I just add them together. I don't need to give them to you separately. Uh, just add them together. Uh, six. Six all together? All together. I'm, oh I'm, no. I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid, J- Jeremy, that you uh, you don't notice anything. But currently, your head is inside the little summer home, uh, and um, uh, you kind of are That's looking probably at. Why? Yeah, you're looking at like you're looking out the veranda of the summer home, uh, and you're looking at the completely miniaturized kitchen that the dog definitely can't use. Oh, it's nice in here. Uh, Noah will look note? around and see. Ooh, is there a note? Oh, I like that question. Uh, is there a note? Ah, the dog what leave an, a note. What an interesting, interesting question. Uh, you know, dogs can't leave notes, but then uh, this is a world <laughs> with five-headed dragons and sentient haze. So 
I guess it's possible. Uh, Jeremy does not see a note. There's no note. Mm. Ah. Are Maybe there I'm... footprints in the dust? Yeah. Sorry. Would you give me a skill roll to see if you can find some? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I interrupted you there, Matthew. No, I was going to say that Jeremy gets stuck in the house. <laughs> <laughs> He stands up, and it's just on his shoulders. <laughs> He's wearing, wearing the house over Whoa! Man. <laughs> okay, that's a 14 for a me. 14 is great, and you do find a set of corgi-sized paw prints, <gasps> and they have dug under the fence uh, into the neighboring yard. Oh. Uh, everyone, everyone, I think that I have the first track of where Lord Arfington Wigglesworth went and I'll take a little pinch of dirt around the tracks and put it in your dirt pocket. Because yes. maybe science can happen later. In the time-honored tradition of all tabletop role players everywhere, you pick everything up mm-hmm. and put it in a bag. Yep. Yes. You don't know. You don't know uh, what that, that, that might that be d- useful. That dirt might come in handy. Yeah, uh, it might. Well, my... My head to the far right swings forward and says, oh, poor thing appears to have absconded rather than have been inducted. Uh, we got to find him. I knew it. He just ran away to have a little adventure. All boys do that. He'll be back to his mommy soon. <laughs> All boys run away. All boys run away from their mother screaming and, <laughs> and wailing. And But they always come back. Thousands of times my sons have come back. I never had parents, so I didn't have anyone to run away from, but I'll believe you. Oh. Um, so zero parents. Zero parents. What's your One. next step? Oh. Uh, I think we should check out the man in the car in the front. Let's, yeah, let's chat with the man in the car. Yeah, Can let's someone just help talk me get this uh, veranda off my, my head? Anyone help, anyone oh, help yeah. Me with this? Uh, Noah will go over for sure and, and help with that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. You're good as new. Good as new. My ponytail uh, is messed up. You, <laughs> I forgot uh, you had a ponytail. I got to write that down. <laughs> you, um, you walk toward the man in the car uh, out front, and uh, as you do so, you see the binoculars quickly go back into the car and him frantically trying to put the window up, but it's taking a long time. It's just going... Kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Peg's gonna come over, and if she could like wave, she would. But she's going, "Hi!" Um, and I wanna. Can I roll? Um, I've got persuasion, I believe. Where's my? Yeah, I've got diplomacy. Ooh, mm. very persuasion. good. And I'd like to go. Hi. Hey, hi there. Hey, would you like a granola? And my granola maybe can like float forward in my haze. Um, and and go, uh, hi. As you hand the granola bar, uh, at first the shadowy figure in the back of the car, uh, it's in the back seat, uh-huh. by the way, and the w- the windows are completely tinted so you can't see and goes, uh, 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 why are you, I, I'm not, uh, t- and then he sees the granola bar and he goes, oh. Yeah, I could go for a granola bar. Okay. And, uh, he reaches out and takes it. Great. Hey, so we were actually going to ask you um, why you are here. Why are you here? Okay, so um, you need to roll persuasion because this guy that definitely it seems kind of secretive. Um, but because you gave him a granola bar... Why don't you take an uh, up arrow? You're gonna yeah. you're gonna um, give yourself. Uh, uh, an, uh, a bonus here, and what that means okay. is your skill die can go up a level. So, what is your normal persuasion skill die? Um, a D four, and then a star. Does the star mean the specialty? It means you have a specialty. What's your specialty? Diplomacy. Be diplomacy. Hmm. Uh, persuasion. That means diplomacy. that means you're better at persuasion in a very official capacity. This feels pretty casual. What with the exchange of the granola bar and all. So why don't you it just does. roll a normal a normal persuasion roll? But I'm gonna let you roll a d6 instead of a d4 when I give you a Woo-hoo! bonus. When I yeah. Okay. So roll a d20 okay. and a d6. 
I rolled a 15 and a one. Uh, that Ooh, is 16. a 16 altogether. Uh, and he says, um, look, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but we're currently <gasps> keeping- I a, love secrets. We're keep, currently keeping a close eye on anyone who has a missing dog. <gasps> we're Why? afraid oh my God. it might have something to do with the dog part. Wait, actually, the dog park? The dog park. Okay, I do know that the dog park is like bad news. Listen to me. Yeah. Don't don't go there. Don't go there. Oh my God, no. Oh my God, no. I would never. (gasps) Thank you so much. That was so helpful. And Peg's going to turn around and go to her friends. Guys, we got to go to the dog park. No, don't do that. Because (laughs) if if you do that, then... I'll have to investigate you, and right now I'm investigating the old lady, and it, uh, it's oh, you're stretched right. thin. Stretched you're- really thin right now. By the way, he's just a shadowy figure with his window halfway up. Stretched really thin right now. Um, you know? I understand. I got like three more installs today. I don't have time to look for a dog. Yeah, I'm telling you, totally and, and we're having to we're having to do time and a half for a lot of our guys. So, oh my just, god, please, please, well, that's gonna please. be great. That's, Do that's, not go to the dog park, please. Nice paycheck okay, on the end not. of it, though. Could be a nice paycheck, but you know, at the end of yeah. the day, w- w- you know, the thing we really all traffic in is time. And uh, this is time You're away so from my right. kids. You know, it's time Are away from my... Are you getting paid per dog or per park? And he rolls the window the rest of the way up. <laughs> <laughs> he rolls the window to the rest of the way up. And then the car okay. very slowly drives away. <laughs> We stand there and watch it go okay, all bye. the way. <laughs> oh my god, that was that was fun. Uh, I like him. I like him. Now, if we're going to I go don't... to the dog park, we need to be careful because, as we all know, there are no dogs allowed in the dog park and no people allowed in the dog park. Yeah, uh, the dog park is actually like I did read about the I did read about the dog park. The dog park is a scary place. <laughs> I just for anyone who's like. How will I know these things? I've pulled this up in the very helpful visitor's guide <laughs> that is part of the yeah. game that lists like every location in Night Vale. And I, I have read a few things now about the dog park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, with what you know about the dog park, is there something we should be doing to prepare for a visit to the dog park? The fence is electrified. Uh, we shouldn't look at it. There are hooded we figures. Should we should look, look at, at them. It. Maybe we keep our eyes on the ground the whole time. Uh, but I might be able to de-electrify the fence when we get there if we want to try and go inside. It's possible. I'm not sure. I have um, some. I have. I have a way to snip the fence. Maybe. Maybe. Would we consider that a basic tool, Jared? Um, like a, we'll, we'll see. Are you going to the dog park? Uh, or do we follow uh, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth's maybe tracks, first, which we do currently have? Yeah. Maybe Let's we fo- first do follow the tracks. Yeah. And keep the dog park in the back of our minds. Mm. Oh, yeah. That seems like if we go to the dog park, that's going to be a time commitment. You may find yourself walking yeah. the perimeter fence for many days and nights without ever turning a corner. All right. Could everybody quit just reading the source book? <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> Everybody's like, we oh, care. this is what's going to happen in this adventure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We would know so, these things. We live here. Why we were we GM materials given to the players? This is not in the GM only like, folder. It has a weakness to the fire. Visitors. It doesn't <laughs> say that. This, like, say the, that. This, is, this is player forward information. It's in the visitors. It, it was like it was like one time when I played with a <laughs> um, like an eight year old. I played D and D with him, and he had memorized the monster manual. And he was oh, like, yeah. "Oh, these are banshees," and I'm like, "This kid." Uh, okay. <laughs> it's not in the GM only folder. Okay, well, uh, that's okay, but uh, okay, let's continue. Would you like to visit the trail? Would you like to follow the trail of Lord Arfington Wigglesworth? Or would you like to proceed to the dog park? Or would you like to do a third thing I haven't thought of? I think we follow Can I go install? Can we all take everyone to help me install cable at the next two to three houses I have to get through the rest of the day? <laughs> Would that yes. speed things up if we would helped? That, would that be dramatic in some fashion? <laughs> I never completed... Fun. I never completed Ms. Sterling's uh, estate, which is what I was there for when we all met up. I was uh, doing her will. I, I will <laughs> say, J- Jeremy, I will say that your window for installing these three other cable installs is from 3 p.m. until um, uh, 1.48 a.m. 
uh, is the window. So sure. you can show up anytime between then. Oh, good, good, good. Honestly, it's easier to do it late at night when it's cooler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we need to follow the the trail of paw prints before they go too cold. It's already been 21 hours. That is a fantastic idea for a boy without parents. I'm so proud of you. Um, I uh, do use they, them pronouns, Just <gasps> Thank you so you're much. You're so welcome. It's not a problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You are such a wonderful child. And I'm your mom. No, I don't have a mom, which I did say earlier. Uh, I, I am your mom. Mm. And that's great. Look, look, paw prints. Let's paw prints. Uh, they, they, see they if we lead can over them. to a, uh, another small house, <laughs> another small house uh, directly neighboring Stella Sterling. And this one seems very dilapidated. Um, mm. uh, you know, the, 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 Shutters are hanging off of it. The the lawn is even more desert wasteland than hers, with with trash and uh, an old rusting car out front. Mm, a little down market for a lord. I don't think he'd stay here long. Mm, unless he was trying to slum it. Oh, good point. So yeah. if he's having a rum springa, if you will. Mm. Let's look around for things that would be attractive to a dog on a room shrink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. So you can um, try to jump over into the backyard or you could, you know, go around to the front and go in the uh, old fashioned way or you could do can anything. I just sort of um, can I just sort of uh, ease through it uh, through the fence <laughs> since I am uh, just Air? a patch of haze? You know, um, uh, you may be a patch of haze, but you still need to give me some kind of role to do something like that. Just like I have evasion. The fact that Clint is playing a five headed climbing. <laughs> a twelve foot tall five headed dragon, I'm not gonna allow him to just like flip a car, you know? Um <laughs> well, that why was not, my next. first of all. Um Evasion, okay, have, you say. That that is a defense. I have, I have infiltration. Hey, that's a Ooh, great have, one. That's a great athletics one. Athletics climbing. <laughs> Would you yeah. like infiltration or athletics climbing? Up to you. I'm going to do infiltration because that sounds yeah. fun. Great. Go for it. Oh, and I'm going to give you an up die because you are a patch of sentient haze. I am. It's true. Okay, that's only a five. Um, but I get to roll a d6. A five plus a four is a nine. A nine. Show it. Okay. Um, so this patch of sentient haze starts to, uh, <sighs> t starts to just kind of slide yeah. between the slats in the fence, Shh, like a, just a gas. But then halfway through, um, it gets Her stuck. Her butt gets stuck. Yeah. Oh my god. Shh, and it's just oh sort of kind of <gasps> shimmering and glowing in the middle of the fence. Oh. Oh my god! I must have I must have gained weight, but only in my ass. <laughs> oh. And, oh my god! And then a, 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 a man a man who's uh who's got like a, a a big burly frame wearing a dirty tank top that just says beer on the front. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and a pair of way too tight, way too high short shorts. Uh, he's very hairy except on the top of his head. Comes out mm. smoking a cigarette and says. Who the hell is trying to get on my property? Oh, I'm hi. warning you. I've got a harpoon. Uh -oh. Hi. Okay. I'm made of gas, <laughs> so it's okay. Um, hey, look. We don't like ga we don't like gassies sneaking around here <laughs> in places okay, they don't belong. Racist. Yeah, no okay, need for racist. slurs, sir. <laughs> uh, um. Well, I'm Peg. I'm Peg. I'm a hey, farmer. Wait, there's more of you on the other side of the fence. Hey, and he uh, he jumps up and looks over the other side of the fence at the other three of you. Uh, I would just stand up and stand and look over the top of the fence. Now, does anybody <laughs> live? Does anybody live in this neighborhood? Uh, I I don't know. I don't think I do. But I have the skill, you know, the farmer mm -hmm. that says, no matter where I travel around Nightvale, everyone knows who I am and what I do. Ah. I'm respected in my occupation, and people listen to me when I speak about my subject matter. Wait a second. You're Peg, the sentient patch of haze. 
Yes! Hi! I'm sorry about that gassy comment. Sorry. I was raised in a rural area. That excuses intolerant attitudes. Here, let me please help you through here. Uh, and he uh, grabs uh, what might be a limb and pulls mm-hmm. you the rest of the way through the fence. Oh, thank you. It's just oh, that wow. my ass has gotten so fat lately. <laughs> I, just, well, now I don't I, know. I, I hate it. I helped you uh, get unstuck there, but now I am going to have to to get my harpoon because you're on my property. Short. Sure. Sure, I do understand that. Uh, it's just that we're looking we're looking for a little lost dog. Lost have you ever, dog. Have you ever have you ever had a dog, sir? What's your name? My name is Mr. Borfus Lard. <laughs> Did you just it, is, <laughs> it is so nice to meet you, Mr. Borfus Lard. Um, have you ever felt the love of a dog? Uh well, yeah, my dogs are right here. Satanus, <gasps> Beelzebub, Asmodeus. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. And he looks How over. Puppies. <laughs> he looks over and there are these chains attached to old dog houses, but there are no dogs in them. And he goes, Aww. hey, where's Asmodeus? Satanus, Beelzebub, They're where have they gone? Missing. And then he <gasps> turns to you and he goes, you stole my dogs. No, no, we would never, Mr. Borf, 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 Mr. Borfus Lord. I'm beginning to not believe Jared when he said he didn't have notes for this adventure. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Borfus Lord, we would never do such a thing. As a mother myself, I would never separate. A, a, a parent from their child. So the rest we of you are, are on simply... the other side of the fence. Mr. Borfuslard grabs his harpoon and runs at Peg, the sinny patch of haze. Oh, no. Uh-oh. 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 So, we got to pull through. I want to evade. Can I evade? Yeah. He throws the harpoon. Let's see how he does. While all this is happening, there's something I want to do while the distraction's happening, so you let me know when you're ready to hear that. Uh, he rolls a 20, which I believe beats <gasps> your evasion. Evasion. Uh, yeah, my defense. evasion is 14. Yeah, um, and you take a point of damage. <gasps> Ow! Pays the Ow, sinian, Mr. Pe- uh, Lard. Peg the sentient patch of haze is sitting there with a harpoon through her center. All right. okay, we all witness that, look, and we will see you in court. <laughs> okay, one of one of Cormac's five heads says, "We will see you in court." And he goes, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! You're a lawyer. I'll have you know, I am five lawyers." <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I, I can take can't, on any kind of case. I can't afford a leather lawsuit right now. I got court dates from here until Tuesday. Here, I'm sorry, Miss. And he yanks the harpoon out of Peg the Sinian Patch Oh, Ow! Face. My head. <laughs> While oh. all of this is happening and is a dis- hopefully a distraction, uh, Noah would like to be looking over the fence for like signs of uh, footprints that match paw prints that match Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. Uh, and I also this the next that's the first thing. Let's just okay. Start give that. me an alertness roll. Come on, that's a nineteen. Okay, Whoa. not only do you find... Oh, wait. If I roll a four on my D4, does that mean anything? It does not. Okay. Um, it just <laughs> means you rolled well. And you know um, what that's like? When you roll the highest on that die, you get a... I don't know. I mean, I might be making that up. <laughs> Paula's like... Uh, Paul, I love playing with... Do I crit? Pa- I love playing with Paula because she's like, hey, is this a rule? Uh, <laughs> it might be. Hey, I had an idea. Hey, I had an idea for a rule. You um, miss all the shots you don't take, right? Like if you're like, yes, why was no one telling me when they were rolling the highest they can on their modifier die? Because that's a crit. What if that was true? And then what if it was we were just not getting our crits. You know what I'm wait, saying? That's okay. all. Wait, you, you can crit. You can crit in this game. And now you're making, I think I need to look it up because I may have mocked you and then maybe I will find out <laughs> that it's like I was being stupid and I was wrong. Okay. Oh my god! So. I'm wrong! I was making fun of you for no reason! Please forgive me. Please, a thousand pardons. Never. If the never result of him. any skill die shows the highest number value and the skill roll is successful, check, check, 
That's a critical success. Uh, I might have it. skimmed the it, player handbook before we Well, that's started allowed. Playing. That's allowed. Um, so, uh, critical success. Never forgive him, Paula. No quarter. Give him so, no quarter. Now I'll that never, we are, ever now, let you Now, now that we down. have decided it's a critical success, I'll tell you the exact same thing I was about to tell you before. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but now everyone knows. Glad we determined that. So not only do you find, remember I was saying not only, it was like I was going to give you a bunch of stuff. I not know, it was Not only great. do it was you good. find a, a set of paw prints that definitely belong to Lord <gasps> Arfington Wigglesworth, yes. but you also find a lock pick <gasps> Ooh. and a sign, uh, uh, not a sign, but like a flyer or like a like something that was meant to be hang, hung up on like a telephone pole or something, uh, reminding people not to visit the dog park. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Corvus so Lard. a lockpick that might have been used on the chains holding Beals above Satanus and Asmodeus. <gasps> Is Lord Arfington trying to use reverse psychology on us? Don't reverse go to this reverse place. Place. That's a strong <laughs> assumption. <laughs> Yes, the, please don't go to the dog park. That's where I want the adventure to not go. Understood. <laughs> Understood. Mm -hmm. So, uh, dog park, and then I'll go do my installs? Okay. That sounds Unless fun. there's one on the way, I guess, yeah. That's true. I should check my map. Oh, we should check check your map. Check your... Yeah, your do, do you have an app? Does your you company give you an app? You can install while we're... Uh, looking for dog friends. Dog uh, Sometimes they give you an app. Or like a dashboard where you can look at your map. Tell me more. You should check you should check to see if your company has an app. Peg just recently learned about apps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. One of uh, one of my sons told me about apps. Um uh Jeremy, do you wanna try to do some installs on the way or do you wanna wait till later? No, I can wait till later. Okay, you get <laughs> you're, you you're receiving bring... mechanical buffs for the more installs you've done before the adventure takes place. I think yeah. for Jeremy, it's just like it's gonna it's gonna weigh on him if he doesn't get the, oh, he doesn't course. get his work done yeah. well, on time. He's, he's through the he's, app he's given to you by your company. You get several <laughs> messengers for cu from customers asking why you're not there yet for their install. But Jeremy, I've got to let you know, you get hundreds of those per day. <laughs> yes, they they are very un they don't observe the the length of the window of time that we give them. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You arrive at the dog park. <gasps> you were pretty sure it was the middle of the day, but yeah. now it is dusk. The dog park is right near the Ralphs in downtown. And okay. yes, in fact, you do see signs on it that say no dogs allowed. No people mm -hmm. allowed. Keep yeah. out and ignore the hooded figures. Mm -hmm. There is a large iron fence surrounding it uh, and a big locked gate in front of you. Uh, the signs are posted on that gate. Uh, you can look around inside. Uh, you can also see inside through the iron gate if you'd like to do that, or you can look around outside. Let me know what you'd like to do. Are How there dog paw prints around the gate? Are there any paw prints around the gate? Yeah. Give me another alertness roll to kind of look around. That's only a six. You don't find any paw prints. Mm. Um, Is there anything to suggest dogs were ever allowed at the dog park? Is it a, a secondary citizens group who's saying no dogs? Like, are there places to put dog poop. Are there mm. uh, a dog play areas that I can see through the fence? You can roll culture or any other appropriate skill that you can think of. I will mm. I will indeed roll culture. I'll, I'll join you in your culture roll. I'll or join no. you in culture. I have no culture. Probably because I have no parents. I don't roll well <laughs> when I, I don't roll You well. have a mommy now. No. <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, I rolled an eight. <laughs> Dirty 20, a 19 and a one. That's a great roll. How'd you do, Jeremy Stackhouse? I rolled a nine. Okay. So only Cormac O'Sullivan, the five-headed dragon, puts his heads together and remembers <laughs> and remembers that uh, long ago, the dog park 
was a sacred place. A place of transition between the worlds. Mm. Oh. Later it was turned into a dog park. That mm. that went very poorly for everyone, and now it is strictly prohibited to enter the dog park. Be you human or dog. Mm. What about Hayes? Yes, say we are not explicitly uh, like named. Peg. Dragons. Like, you don't consider yourselves people. Dragons and <laughs> Hayes are not specifically prohibited. <gasps> oh, how are you gonna get in? Yeah, I think uh, Jeremy. Were you wondering how high the fence was? Maybe I saw you looking yes, at that. Yes. How high is the fence? The fence is like oh, about ten feet tall. Is it a chain link fence? Like, can we see through it, or would I have to go up? You can see, see through it, but it's not really chain link. It's more like wrought, wrought iron. iron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, is the gate if- locked? Can we simply open it? <laughs> the gate is um, covered in chains with a big old-fashioned yeah. lock on the front. Mm. All right. Jeremy is going to hop the gate. What? How is it possible? Well, so I have two. I have an ability called Gravity Optional. Uh, oh. thanks, thanks to my time as a uh, in the Blood Space War, uh, <laughs> so I can triple the result of an athletic skill test to jump. All right, triple. give me an athletic skill test. So, question for you: Am I tripling the entire result, or just what's on the skill die? You're gonna triple the amount of distance you can do with a jump, uh, and I will be calculating that to the centimeter using a series of trigonometric tools that I have here in my studio. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Never let it be said that you don't come prepared to sessions, Jared. I feel like the math on jumping is one of the most important components to any role-playing game. (laughs) Jared loves talking about math, too. Yeah. (laughs) I rolled the wrong skill die. Pause. I was literally teaching trigonometry this morning, so... Okay. I rolled a 15, but with a six on the skill die, which is a D6. That is a critical success. And um, you guys watch as Jeremy Stackhouse easily leaps over the fence and into the green dog park beyond. Uh, Jeremy, we Um, are humans. Uh, I'm choosing not to consider myself a person. My son is such a good jumper. Wait, are are you my mom? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not just yes. everyone's mom, Peg. I think I am. I think no. I am. Statistically I I speaking, be. Peg is a mom to billions, and thus probably us. Statistically, I'm pro- probably your mom. <laughs> I feel oh. all of a sudden. I feel terribly guilty. I've never given you a card or you know, wished oh, you a happy sweetheart. birthday. That's okay. That's okay. As a mom, I put my children's needs first. <laughs> Yeah, it's a giving tree situation. Everything you do diminishes her in some way. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm, Don't I'm, worry. I'm getting the feeling that you actually you actually are hurt, even though you're saying you're okay. No, I'm fine. See, again, I feel like you're not fine. <laughs> yeah. What do you How mean? How is this haze <laughs> clenching its teeth so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> 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 um, I'm not super good at judging people's like emotional states because and I've always I wasn't that raised about you. around people. We met very recently, Peg. Um, <laughs> but you don't look fine. Also, how are you doing, Jeremy? Are you fine now that you're in Jeremy. the place that humans are specifically forbidden from going? Yeah, Can you unlock around. the door for us? Looking around, there is a uh, eerie mist blanketing the ground and uh, the sun has fully gone down and there's a palpable sense of dread everywhere also you have stepped in dog shit <laughs> oh. there have been dogs oh. in there it is scary in there <laughs> uh, I just gotta I'm oh, sorry I gotta I gotta clean my shoe hang on and it's like kind of white trying to wipe his his work boot on the uh, on the wrought iron fence. Oh, not knowing that there's dog poop in there, uh, Noah will call out, "Hear ye, hear ye, Lord of Kibble, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth, solicitations and salutations, and see if anything mm. happens." 
there is, perhaps, far off, perhaps not even on this plane of existence, perhaps in some parallel plane, a responding, yep, yep. <laughs> come on, right. come on, come, gotta, where are you? Come on, come back, come back here, please. We gotta go we help gotta go him. Get him. Otherwise, Mrs. Sterling won't give me a five-star review on her install. <gasps> and they can see that, that on that the app. <laughs> currently, currently, Jeremy's inside, but the rest of you are still outside the dog park. All right. Uh, do you see in. any way you can open the door? Uh, I, can I roll alertness to see if there's any way I can help them? A, a, an opening in the fence, perhaps, or something? Um, yes. Um, that's a great idea. Go ahead. Use your bolt cutters. Uh... I rolled, bolt cutters. I rolled a nine. Uh, a nine? <laughs> um, a that is a fail, but that gives you a story point, Jeremy, if you recall. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so Every time I fail. What is a story point? A story point is like a bottle cap or a hero point. It allows you to re-roll anything when you rolled a one. It allows you to roll as if you have a specialty uh, on a roll, if you'd like. It allows you to add five to your defense if someone's attacking you. Those are some of the things a story point allows you to do. And each of you, uh, there's, a, there's a pull of four for the entire crew, but our friend Jeremy has a special ability, a special perk Ooh. that has raised it now to five. I That's also cool. have this, I have with my, as a, I'm a member of the bowling team, the Nightfield bowling team, and I, uh, I lead them in their conditioning. Um, and I can give everyone a, like an up one on group athletic skill tests. Mm, um, I like that. So could I? Maybe I'm thinking that I will. Um, I'll, hop, I'll, I'll hop back up, but hang up the top of the fence and see if I can help pull people up. Unfortunately, hopping up to the top of the fence, you are immediately shocked by the electrical charge that runs through this wrought iron barrier. <laughs> um, not enough to harm you yet, but you do fall back into the dog park. Five-headed yeah, dragon, Cormac O'Sullivan. You have a question. When he is electrocuted, can we see his bones? You do <laughs> see his bones. It is oh, very so strong. I, <laughs> it is unfortunate, but very cool looking. Wow. Uh, I have a PhD level knowledge in electricity and maintenance. So can I please find, knowing how fences and other things like this work, I would love to find where the electricity is coming from and maybe turn that off. You can. And you do with a technology skill roll. You and find that's a probably big. Probably not theoretical. This is pretty physical. Pretty physical. Well. You find a big junction box hanging off the side of the dog park. Hold on, everyone. I think I might be able to de electrify this fence. Oh. Is this a Is this drawing city power, even though the, the citizens cannot use this municipal space? Cor Cormac. Uh, you see a big wire going directly into a manhole on the ground that says city power. And you hear a hum that's like, <laughs> as it must be drawing thousands of volts. When I, when I am elected mayor, one of the first things I'm going to do <laughs> is address this. It's shut down the very dog well. Park. Yeah, how'd so, you do, how'd you do Noah? Uh, I rolled... Okay, I ha wait, I have to do uh, uh, math for a second. Uh, I think that's a 24, 18 plus 6, and that was a 6 on the D6 oh, that I rolled. So I did very well. Critical success. And with your critical success, the electricity has been completely shut off, and you think you may have also disabled an alarm. <gasps> yes! Oh, and also while I was in here... I figured out there was an alarm, the beauty of being raised by a house. Uh, and so I've disabled that as well. So hopefully we can now get over without seeing all of our bones and also alerting anyone that we're here. So try it again, Jeremy. Uh, the house was sort of like my mom and dad without actually being my mom and dad, because I don't know I who they your are. your mom and dad. Did the house love you and vice versa? I had a very happy childhood. Not what I asked. So, well, I, I. I want to be very clear that this is the tope head who practices family law. 
is quite concerned. <laughs> well, the house gave me a lot of knowledge, made sure I was educated, is the reason that I knew how to do what I just did. And and so clearly the house cared for my future well-being. And I would say that that is probably a form of love. Um, Peg is going to turn to Cormac, uh, to the tope head that practices family law, and say, they've been parentified. <laughs> they've been raised by uh, emotionally immature parents. <laughs> uh, uh, the, well, they need to be well, emancipated and adopted by me. <laughs> well, that's a lo- that's a long and <laughs> that's a long and complicated process. Uh, we'll have and to we'll gather talk. a lot of information. We'll talk. We'll talk afterwards. We'll talk shop. Uh, I fine. reach in my pocket and I have, I have five different cards. I find the proper card. I give you the family <laughs> law card. I hand it over. Thank you so much. I just put it in my haze. Yeah, it says Cormac O'Callaghan slash Tope Family Law. <laughs> slash Tope. All right. Uh, Jeremy will try to jump up again on the top of the fence to help pull anyone who needs help over. Very Great. good. Everyone can make an athletics roll with an up die, meaning uh, you increase your athletics. Ooh, baby. I rolled a natural 20. Ooh. Plus a three. Easily, you you almost mimic Jeremy's jumping skills. Oh, cool. yay! <laughs> uh, I got a fifteen. You okay, Mom? Quite enough. <laughs> you make it. I'm doing with great. Jeremy's help and thank you, son. expert coaching. Although at one point he starts giving you I- instructions that sound like they would more apply to putting a spin on a bowling ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I'll uh, remember that. I'll file that one away for later. Yeah. Somehow, if you follow them, it works. Yeah. It's something about defocusing your eyes, but it helps you get over the fence. <laughs> How did you do, Cormac O'Sullivan? A uh, 17 and a 1, so 18. Oh. Yeah. All of our party has jumped over into the Forbidden Dog Park. They are breaking the law. They have entered a forbidden zone. And when we come back, we will find out what happens to them. But as we go to a short break, I just want to remind everybody that September 17th, the backer kit for the Welcome to Night Vale role-playing game will be debuting from Renegade Game Studios. So please be sure to check out the URL here in the description of this video to get more info on that. And we're just going to take a short little pause for the cause. Welcome back to Night Vale. Our party of eccentric weirdos finds themselves inside the dog park. No people allowed. No dogs allowed. Please ignore the hooded figures. You are standing in the confines of the dog park. An eerie mist covers the ground. Angry, stunted trees hang at obscure angles and the moon shines down a wan pale corpse like light you're trying to find lord arfington wigglesworth what do you do now uh, the we? direction that we heard the the barking perhaps yeah. from the wrong the wrong side of a portal 
The bar- barking seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> Would you like to um, tell me exactly how you're exploring the dog park? Do you have any details, or would you just like to wander aimlessly, which no. is a totally toe. valid option? I have a very specific way we should approach this. I was, I was, right. I've been thinking about it ever since I stepped in the dog poop and then fell back into the dog poop, which is that mm-hmm. I think we should go from the pile dog. of dog shit to pile of dog shit because oh. if no dogs are allowed, then the only dogs that would shit in here are the ones we're looking for. Mm. Yeah. All right, great. What skill would allow you to follow piles of dog poop? Animal handling? That's correct. (laughs) (laughs) Give me an animal handling roll, but because you are in the dog park, I will give you an up die. No, no, you know what I'll do? I'll give you edge. That means that you get to roll Mm. 2d20s and take the better one. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I like that. I, have I a love deep. when Jared gives us edge because it t- takes so long. <laughs> <laughs> and then I always feel like I'm almost there. You yeah. know? Oh my God. I love edging you guys. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So I don't know if this applies to a D2, which is what I have in animal handling, but I rolled a two on my D, on my D2, and but the total was 15. Uh, total is 15. Uh, you rolled two d20s and took the better, right? Yes. 15 is plenty. You find uh, that you can run about like 400 yards and find another pile of dog poop. And then Whoa, another. that's a huge gap between po- piles of poop. Yes, but the the smell is strong as Modius, Beelzebub, and Satanus <laughs> probably yeah. weren't eating science diet, you know? Uh, <laughs> Uh, you uh, you make your way between piles of dog poop and soon find yourself so far from the perimeter of the dog park that you can no longer see the fence. This place Uh-oh. is definitely bigger on the inside, like a TARDIS or something. Ooh. Mm. Have we noticed any signs of hooded figures? Oh, it's just so amazing that you mention that now because Uh-oh. you finally come to a pile of dog poop and look up and you see a big black stone obelisk. And near that big black stone obelisk are four hooded figures with their hands raised toward the obelisk and strange purple lightning arcing down into their faces and hands. It is a sight of occult terror. And you know that if you beeline it for the next pile of dog poop, you will have to go right in between them. So, what do you do? Oh, and by the way, you're not supposed to look at them. Yeah, look look down, look at the ground. Okay, (laughs) Uh, Noah looks at the ground. Yes. No, not at all. I'm I'm looking every direction. You're looking- I'm looking (laughs) at the ground. You almost can't help looking every direction. You don't have eyes, but you- (laughs) Yeah, you got- How do you sense? Um, I, uh, uh, feeling. Yeah, Yeah, emotion. (laughs) (laughs) All right. How are people avoiding looking at the hooding figures? What skill role are they using? Um, Um, I, I'm going to use might to forcibly avert my eyes. Oh, Mm. interesting. Interesting. Um, No, uh, I guess I should use athletics. Athletics. uh, Athletics. I think for this one, I'm going to require some sort of smarts or uh, social skill role. And by the way, you can choose to just look right at them if you'd like. I just, that's what Jeremy will do. He's yeah, going to try to avert his up. eyes and then just look directly at them. I wonder uh, what they're doing around the obelisk. Oh, okay. Cormac O'Sullivan's going to look directly at them. Is anybody else going to look directly at them? No, I yes. am looking down. And using science, because the analytical part of my brain says, study the ground and not the things you're not supposed to be looking at. Uh, I don't think I'm going to allow science. I know I'm being that GM. Uh, No, I thought it was a stretch. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure actually which are smarts based and what or social like. Yeah, me neither. Uh, you said I'm not. I'm not entirely sure which ones qualify. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, um, let's see. I'm trying to find the skill list here to kind of help you out. Yeah. Um, like 
Yeah, we have yeah. four. Uh, well, maybe my character. But I don't know how they apply. Here's the thing: is my character it does have the how strange description. The strangeness is fascinating to me, and I'm always intrigued by what's happening and how it can be explained and defined for others to understand its meaning. So you know what? I changed my mind. You would look. I would look, and I will use my weird skill uh, to understand what's happening. Okay, that's great. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, smart skills are alertness, culture, science, survival, and technology. Social skills are animal handling, deception, performance, persuasion, and streetwise. Do our stats modify the skill rolls? Uh, no, your stats do not modify skill rolls, except that you, uh, when you create a character like we did with Matthew, you are limited by your stat. Uh, you are given mm. a certain amount of points based on your stat. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, it looks like everybody's looking at it, um, and oh that- no, I'm not gonna look because I I'm gonna look like right around them, and but I want to use diplomacy. Okay, just to be like hi. Hey. Okay, so you're looking around them, but you're talking to them. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna allow Noah to use their weird skill first, to, and mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out what they're doing, right, Noah? Yeah. Uh, now this says I gain an, a two up arrow on all weird skill tests, and I can use my science skill to make the test. Uh, okay. Because of my how strange. So okay. that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, go so for that it. That means I roll. So I'm gonna roll with a D8. So normally my science is a D4. So up two would be a from yeah a D8. D8. Yep. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Yeah. Um. Wow, I rolled so bad on my d20, so that's a 10 total. Um, a 10 total. It's not You're great. completely unsure what these strange occult figures are doing, Have but an like arc it? of purple lightning leaves the obelisk <gasps> and hits you in the face. Oh no, I'm really, roll low because I, what happens if I die? What is your willpower score? 18. Ah, good. You are shaken by the strange energies, but you are unaffected. <laughs> Cormac O'Sullivan, what is your willpower score? 13. Okay. Cormac oh O'Sullivan, you are shaken by an arc of purple lightning that goes into your uh, three of your faces, but you are not damaged in any way. And uh, Jeremy Stackhouse, you were looking right at it as well, right? Yep. Okay, Jeremy, you, what is your uh, willpower score? 15. Jeremy, I have bad news. <gasps> no. You become oh com completely entranced and you know that you want to reach up and help them. You want to join them. You want to raise your arms up to the obelisk and give praise and add your voice, your silent voice to their silent <sighs> song. Please allow me to help with your obelisk install. Uh, <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, Peg, what is your willpower score? 14. 14. But I'm not looking at it. Oh, that's right. You weren't looking at it, Peg. You're okay. Peg, what are you going to say to these guys? I just want to say, hi. Um, Have you guys seen any puppies? <laughs> <laughs> um, the hooded figures immediately lower their hands. The purple lightning quits shooting from the obelisk. They turn to all four of you oh and pull gosh. large ceremonial daggers out oh, of their no. robes. Yes, Cormac. I would like to, uh, I have a perk called language tapes, uh, which is I have a small collection of highly illegal language tapes that contain cursed educational information, and I can use it to gain fluency in any two languages of my choice. What I would like is to remove the headphones that one of my heads has been wearing the entire time, learning the language <laughs> silent song, to then uh -huh. speak to the hooded figures in their language. <gasps> um, all right. So um, you may now give a meaningful look, which is actually a song of silence 
to the hooded mm -hmm. figures to communicate something to them. Uh, hello, figures, my old friends. I'm going to talk with you again. <laughs> <laughs> no. They really oh. like that opening. <laughs> yeah. They are they 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 kind of they have their ceremonial daggers out like this, but when you say that they all go, oh, and put them down. <laughs> nice. Uh we are uh looking for some dogs that have come into your park against yeah, the signage to be clear. Dogs you have. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps you can direct us. Your park against the sun. Uh, they can't pay for this song, to be clear. Perhaps. <laughs> okay. You can direct. It's parody. It's parody. Um, parody you're gonna law, need, parody law. You're going to need to roll persuasion, I think, my friend Cormac. But your excellent opening gives you edge. Yeah. Edge. May I pitch performance as it is done in song. Yes, you may. Oh, as now well. performance is allowed. Uh, and Jeremy's also a performer right now. He can't help. Me. Uh, actually, Jeremy, you are reaching out to the obelisk. Your the strange spell over you hasn't uh, ended yet. Uh, and uh, as you guys are talking to the hooded figures who aren't paying attention, Jeremy is being wreathed in purple lightning. <gasps> uh Oh, that doesn't sound great. No. Um, uh, I got an eight and eight, so 16. Eight and eight is a 16, and that is a success. You ask in, in silent song, and then they give you a significant look out of their shadowy hoods that lets you know the exact direction to walk in to find uh. those dogs. Ah, that's amazing. It's just a look like this. <laughs> that definitely <laughs> means north it by says northwest. everything. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can we can we uh, just physically pick Jeremy up? And bring no, him with first him? Jeremy has to try to harness and control these roiling oh occult energies, and if he fails, there will be a terrible consequence. Jeremy, how are you going to control these occult energies? Do you have a way to do that? Um, TV antenna. Well, I mean. <laughs> Do I have my wits about me? Like, can I choose? Do I have any ability to choose anything, to do anything? Or is this more of just, I'm trying to innately resist? I'm going to say that you you start to come to and you realize that you are being uh, buffeted by strange eldritch energy that threatens to consume you or rip open a hole in the time-space continuum. These guys oh. know how to operate an obelisk, but this is technology that they didn't teach you at cable installation school. <laughs> yeah, so I have technology and I'm wondering if I, and I, you know, since I know a little bit about electrical engineering, I do know some things. Could I find a way to maybe like find a piece of metal or use a piece of metal that I have on me, my screwdriver maybe? Kind of yeah. Like gather the electricity and then toss it aside and break free. I love this idea. Give me a technology roll. Okay, it is. Would you consider this activating my specialization in engineer uh, engineering? No. Okay. Because it's a, it's it's you're using a very strange use of technology having to do with eldritch forces. Okay. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. I rolled a ten. Okay, you roll a ten. That's not enough. So you're holding this screwdriver and all of this purple energy is going into it and suddenly it sprays out and everyone, what is your evasion? Uh, first oh, of all, no. you definitely, Jeremy, you definitely take one damage from it, okay? All right. Actually, wait, let me roll a D2 and tell you how much you take, oh actually. Oh my gosh. That's oh, scary. Yeah, you take one damage from it. And what's everybody's evasion score? Let's start with Noah. Mine's 13. 13, Noah, you take one damage from it. And Cormac. Oh, no. Uh, 14. Cormac, you take no damage from it. And Peg. 14. Peg, you take one damage from it. Uh, as you were well. all like shocked and electrocuted by purple lightning and suddenly the hooded figures run up like, like, oh, oh like uh, uh, wringing their hands, like what has happened here? And then they immediately raise their hands again and capture the purple lightning and hold it at Ugh. bay. 
Um, so Peg is dead. Uh, Peg is- You have one She's already yeah. taken, she already You're... took, Peg already took a point of I already took took damage the from the harpoon. She took a harpoon to the haze. How do we wow. heal her? I do have, I do have a deep breathing perk where if I, 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 I took a meditation class and so um, once per scene, I can heal one damage by taking an action to breathe. Um, so um, this sentient patch of haze is lying on its back. Uh, uh, <laughs> and oh, uh, I did, wait, wait, wait! I uh, my failure added another story point to the pool. Oh, of Can course. You, could she have chosen to use a story point retroactively? Uh, she may have, but I'm not going to allow retroactively, my friend. We have to decide those things when it happened, and I, I think she's already got a way to handle it, guys. She's going okay. to. Do her deep breathing. This is really okay. gonna activate her martyr syndrome now. Namaste. I took a meditation class on Tuesday. <laughs> just recently, <laughs> this past just, Tuesday. Just this week. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, I try so to fast. take it every couple weeks. And now you okay, know. Okay, I'm feeling a little better. Now you know why you always ignore the hooded figures. You might distract yeah. them from their very, very important duty of keeping the purple lightning from emanating from the strange <laughs> Blackstone obelisk. Oh, now oh. we know. We're so sorry to have distracted you, but it is time to they move. They turn around and ignore Northwest. the obelisk when you start talking to them. No, <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's just go, let's just go. Let's They're just very go. distractible. <laughs> I'm sorry, we all got hurt. That's the reason We're for the ignoring fence. them for their own good. It's like with somebody with ADHD. It's like, don't talk to them. It's like, that's oh. the reason for the fence and the sign and everything. It's just that they, they will just talk them. to you if you talk to them. Yeah, they get bored and distracted easily. Uh, we learned so much. I'm, I can't wait to, to write this down in a report and share it with everyone and really educate, really educate everyone on what's going on here. Are you gonna do a show and tell at school? I'm, I, I do work at the Nightvale Community College as a scientist. <gasps> I'm not a so student. That's so fun! Yeah. If you ever need, um, uh, bring your mom to school day. I don't I have would one, love so I won't be. To talk about, you don't have a bring your mom to school day. I don't That's have a mom, too bad. as I've said well, mom, over and, and over me. and over again. The house is kind of a mom and a dad, we had said. Yeah. And you, so am I. you walk Mom. in the direction that the hooded figures pointed to, <laughs> and you find okay. yourself standing North northwest. in front of a freestanding plain oak door. <gasps> oh. It has a doorknob and a hinge, and it is standing in the middle of the dog park by itself with no building attached. I will look on the back side of the door. It looks like the back of a freestanding oak door. Plain oak door. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. It Mama, is currently right. shut. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. Okay. I'm at about 50% uh, health. One out of two being 50%. Oh, same. Um, but uh, yeah. I'm feeling okay. Um, should we knock? And she's gonna um, she's gonna walk up and do that knock that moms do, where it goes. Shaving like, a haircut. She's gonna do that on the door. The yeah, old shaving a haircut, two bits. Shave and a haircut. Um, uh -huh. the, the you doors. do your own two bits. You don't let somebody else do the two bits. No, 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 no. I do my own two bits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the door slowly creaks <gasps> open, and through it, you do not see more dog park, but rather a wide desert landscape. I will call through the door. Hear ye, hear ye, Lord of Kibble. Lord Arfington Wigglesworth, solicitations and salutations. Far off, this time not in another dimension, but definitely on the other side of the door somewhere, you hear, yep, yep. Well, okay. that feels like definitely, I heard it, <laughs> I heard it. I have a cat who maybe doesn't want to be in this room anymore. It's too bad for you, <laughs> can't get up. It sounds uh, suspiciously like a corgi in a in a different dimension. <laughs> should, should we go in there? I feel like we go. I think we have. I feel to. like we go. Still need those five stars from Mrs. Sterling. Should I? Okay, I have 
a skill that I can do once per investigation. I don't know if this is exactly what this means. You tell me, Jared, you will. So I have, uh, once per investigation, I can manifest a technological device to help with my investigation, regardless of whether the scanner should be in the kitchen is what it says here. So I'm wondering if, if there could be a technological device that could like tether us to this doorway so that we can get back to it when we're done exploring this other dimension. Hmm. Uh, what kind of device? Like an air that tag. What's an air tag? Maybe it's like a an app that allows me to place a pin that an will app. like track us back to where this portal doorway is once we cross over. Okay. Yes, I'll allow it. Okay. So what I'll, service oh. do you have that it works on both sides of the door? That's incredible. Do you it's have a Verizon? Special well, it's, it's a special, it's oh. actually through, it's through Jeremy's company, actually, I think, but it's like a business fiber, you know, like that they do mm. that is specific to the science department of the Night Vale Community College. Yeah, these cable folks so are trying to get me to do their phone service for yeah. forever, and it feels crazy. Who uses the cable company as their phone company? It's very reliable. <laughs> uh, I have it, yeah. and it's, you know. I have it in my house. Did you install myself. On your home phone? <laughs> <laughs> on the landline my landline uh, alright so I will drop a little I'll open the app and I, okay we should if we go in we should be able to find your way back with this very what good what are we waiting for who wants to step forward first ooh it Let's looked it. like Cor uh, Cormac wanted to I think Cormac was was getting yeah. in there I did the Super Mario Brothers walk you did Cormac you did. <laughs> you, your draconic bulk pushes through the plain oak door into the desert landscape. You immediately fall nine feet oomph, onto <laughs> the desert uh, ground. Oh my gosh. Two, two thirds of my height. <laughs> looking around, you see that you are just on the outskirts of the parking lot of Big Rico's Pizza in Night Vale. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's the desert landscape of the town we live in. Through just the, the different <laughs> oh. just area of town. Huh. Oh. Huh. I love it. Oh. Uh, okay. I'll just goes. Well, oh. yeah, great. Oh, Is anybody hungry? In my Does anybody need a snack? I am kind of hungry. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I'll just I have a granola pizza. bar. Granola Is, bar. Is everybody granola going time. through? Is everybody going through? Yeah. Yes. You immediately oh, yeah. fall nine feet, each of you. Um, oh, I'm gonna yeah. get. But don't hurt, worry, right? it's onto a soft dune, so there's no damage <laughs> uh, accrued. Thank you. And looking back up nine feet from where you came from. You see no door. <gasps> but you do see my hat. Is the you, pin still there? You, you do see off to your left the parking lot for Big Rico's Pizza. Oh. Well, we'll just go to Big Rico's. Wait, and, wait, the, wait, and uh, the rest of the night vale. Noah, call okay. call call uh, Lord Arfington again. Oh, uh, hear ye, hear ye, Lord of Kibble, Lord Arfington Wigglesworth, solicitations and salutations. Yep, yep. From a little farther into town, you can hear the, <gasps> the cries. He's in the pink berry. <laughs> All right, let's He's head towards the, the yep. Um, eventually, yeah. you come to the pink berry. And uh, <laughs> the pink berry on one side of its parking lot does have a chain link fence. And caught in that chain link, chain link fence is a little necktie. <gasps> and attached to that little necktie is a corgi with a bowler <gasps> hat on. Yes. Lord Arfington! Lord Arfington Wigglesworth! What are you doing here? Yep, yep. Uh, I've got Where's one more Where's Nick Tanny and Beelzebub <laughs> and Asmodeus? Yep, yep. Cormac, mm. do, if, can you do another language? Do you speak uh, corgi? I, I get two for that skill, so uh, another head takes off another set of old-style tape headphones <laughs> and says, I guess if Corgi's close to Doberman, which is what I've been studying, let's try it. Uh, and now you're listening to Lord Arvington Wigglesworth, and you understand his yips, and he's saying, my <gasps> erstwhile companions abandoned me when I became entangled in this terrible and diabolical barrier. Uh, mm. To be clear, were you following them or they you? Where, where were you headed? 
We were going out for a night of ribaldry, doing rotten oh. things to get our kicks. <laughs> The way the lower Mischief. classes enjoy uh, themselves. You want to go out with your hood rat friends and do hood rat shit. I do not know what a hood rat is, but if you mean <laughs> that I was consorting among the peasants, then you've hit the dartboard in the center, my friend. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of you just hear, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, will, I, I, I guess in real time, one of the heads will be Translating from yeah. Uh, so he's a he's a little dirty dog. See if he will he come back uh, to yes. uh, to Stella because we know Jeremy needs his five star review. Uh, is it your wish to return to the home of Stella Sterling at the end of your evening of erotic escapades? Certainly, I consider Miss Sterling to be my mother. And I would never leave her permanently. One just wants to feel one's wild oats occasionally. Mm. Uh, with this, boys I will... Boys will be boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will uh, loosen him from the tie, uh, loosen the tie from the fence, and I'll turn to them and say, I think we should let him go. <laughs> no! Well, tell no. him. Tell him next time to leave a note before he runs off. Yeah, we checked your house for a note. Did you consider leaving a note? Why didn't you leave a note? Unfortunately, for your mother? I am not fluent in American English. I only speak Corgi. I find the English language to be a barbaric tongue, and I wouldn't sully my mouth with it. Mm. <laughs> As a barrister, uh-huh. I believe you are a barrister, sir. Am I mistaken? You are not wrong. I would have five barristers. I would appreciate if you would pro bono return me to Miss Sterling and explain my position. I would like to have a night off occasionally to go and experience life the way others live it. So uh, one of my heads, uh, Eggshell, who uh, works in contract law, will explain that this feels like a very simple uh, cohabitation agreement. Uh, Many people do it when they have non-standard marriages perhaps uh, mm-hmm. uh, then I think we can work this out I will rifle through my cards and tuck one into the pocket of his little jacket uh, very Let's well say. sir lead the way let us return to the home of Stella Sterling do we care at all about finding Beelzebub, Asmodeus and Satanus or I mean that guy did shoot Peg, so maybe with we a, don't. With a damn but that's not he the did dog's shoot me fault. with a tarpoon. Yeah. Uh, but they uh, also abandoned Lord Arfington Wigglesworth. Who uh, let's put it to them. Lord Arfington. Should we go, go find yes. him or not? Hmm. Those ne'er do wells. I uh, don't know what sort of deviltry they've gotten themselves into, but uh, whatever it is, they deserve it. They'll have to apologize to me before I uh, go out with them again. Mm. A lover's spat. I understand. <laughs> I think. What is she saying? It just sounds like a series of yips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to me as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, perhaps before we go home, Pinkberry? Ooh, and, I and love Pinkberry. I do like Pinkberry. I, I it's low in Pinkberry. calorie. A little mochi on top. Ooh, yes, yes. Too, too chewy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You all uh, go into the Pinkberry and order your usual Pinkberry order. Uh, please make alertness rolls. <gasps> oh. Ooh. Ooh. Fourteen. 13, but if that's a success, that's a crit from me. Ooh. Six. Oh. It is only Jeremy who has critted, who looks up at the calorie count for each of the Pinkberry <laughs> menu oh, servings no. and notices that uh, it, it's quite high. Uh, one Pinkberry is over 1,200 calories. Oh. Wow. That's 
stunning. It should Ooh. taste better for that many calories. Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, it, it sort of it sort of feels like it's it, it should be mostly water, but it's not. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> If you are oh, quite oh. done, if you are quite done consuming frozen gruel, I would like to return to my <laughs> owner, please. Hmm. Of course, of course, of course your of mommy. Course. We understand. We must return the boy to his mommy. Uh, I will. I'll just yeah, push the pink berry away, and well, I guess let's head back. I guess we're walking. Does someone have a backpack to put him in? He can ride in my coverall. I'll, I'll unzip it a little bit and then just let him sit. Perfect. That's pretty good. Oh, That's, that's really oh nice. how droll. I feel like a common laborer. <laughs> <laughs> how droll. Uh, perhaps we should call a cab. Oh, all right. Ooh. Oh, or this car that's been following us. They might give us a ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh hi. Uh, the, <laughs> hi. The car is not there. Oh, <gasps> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> nice track one. Oh, I it's guess there. we walk then. It's not. No. It's about a fifteen. Right. It's about a fifteen minute walk. That's okay. not bad. I right. should have time still to get home in time to consume my daily three and a half hours of public television. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'll say this for the dark park. It was much cooler in there. Mm, mm-hmm. It was. It was. Nice. It was. It was nice mm, to be I'll, out of the sun sometimes. Mm-hmm. Probably you, ten degrees. <laughs> You walk back toward Miss Stella Sterling's house, and on your way, you notice a mountain with a red blinking light on top. Eventually, you arrive uh, at her front walk. (laughs) Did we just ignore the mountain with the red blinking light on top? Um, It's pretty far away. I did. Pretty large. (laughs) It has a red blinking light on top. Have we ever seen it before? Is this something we're used to seeing, or is this new? This is new. You've never seen this before. (gasps) Hmm. Have I seen the mountain, but not the red blinking light? You've seen neither the mountain nor the red blinking light. Wow. Let's drop this dog off because I want to find out what that is. New mountain. (laughs) Wow. All right, let's go to Miss. Let's let's drop the. Let's drop uh, Lord Arfington off. No side quests. No side quests yet. yet. As soon as we drop off this dog. All right. um, You are in her front yard. Where there is a lawn jockey and a oh, bird retrograde. house. Retrograde. Don't care for that. Take it over. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that those were racist. It's uh, it's a people lawn. Pa- people paint them white all the time, but no one's fooled. It's a lawn jockey. <laughs> this is a lawn jockey, but it has one of those um, one of those uh, messages like at the beginning of old Disney movies on the front of it. <laughs> That's sure. like, this, this represents a certain historical <laughs> yeah. era. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. You got it. Uh, someone should Stella, knock on the door. Stella, yes. honey. Okay, okay, okay I'm going to knock. The Stella. little old lady answers to the door and she says, well, hi, y'all. You can't. I have more How, why, is, do, what do I owe shirt. this visit to? Hold on. She's yeah. different, right? The yeah. yard is different because before it had gnomes. Her she looks changed. exactly the same. Her accent's different. Oh no! <gasps> I ran to the backyard. It's because we went through the door. We <laughs> went through the door and we went into a different parallel night veil. You run to the backyard and you see Lord Arfington Wigglesworth playing in his <gasps> summer house. Still dressed as a fancy little man, even though she's southern now. Um, now dressed as a southern fancy little man. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, a white suit with a bolo tie. Oh. Uh, I, I begin to have one of those like Kino Fist editing end of Usual Suspects where you drop the coffee cup and you start seeing flashes of things and I go <laughs> yeah. back to all the photos yeah. and realize every photo in her house in different costumes was a different dimensional Lord Arpington. <laughs> <gasps> okay, we have to go back. Go back. Uh, never mind. We have, we have to, to go, go back. back. Hey, wait, I'll pull out wait, my app and we have to go back. The ping is. Wait, question. Do you have cable installed in this, in this house? I don't have time, Jeremy. <laughs> We're addition. Uh, I have to get home. No, I just, just want to make sure. Do you have cable installed in this house? Um, why, well, uh, n- no. Uh, uh, we're, we're cord cutters. I, I, I just use Wi-Fi. Slams the door in her face. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, to get, we have to get back to where we were. Suddenly, my more, sons, my family. 
Suddenly, suddenly Mr. Borfuslard runs out of his house and he says, can someone please help me? A group of angry dogs <laughs> is attacking my dogs. Oh wow. no, it's a, oh gosh. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, we'll go back. Can I use animal handling to try to get control of Say Can Tannis. I Tannis. Tannis be as as Modius be as 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 <laughs> yes. Can I help as well? Oh, Have they're that, hurting that too. Handling? They're hurting yeah. Gabriel and Michael. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay, I, dirty twenty. Ah, oh, <laughs> nice. Terrible. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, uh, Jeremy runs back into Mr. Borfuslard's well-maintained backyard and manages to pull Satanus Asmodeus and Beelzebub off an identical trio of pit bulls who whimper and cower in the corner. Oh. Oh. So now I've got Lord Arfington in my shirt and then the other three pit bulls by the chains. Yes. I look Just like a dog the walker. the Lord of Dogs. You look like a dog walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to get back to our own dimension. Well, I, how do we do that? Well, do we go to the dog park in this dimension? Um, suddenly a uh, car uh, goes by. It's a truck and there's music coming out of it, but it has the McDonald's logo on the side. And the guy's going, McDonald's, McDonald's. <laughs> this oh, the McDonald's doesn't seem truck. that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad everything is still normal with the McDonald's truck. <laughs> Ice cream is fine, but if I could just get nuggies on the side of the street. Maybe the nuggies are locale. Maybe we oh, want to stay. Be. That's why the pink berry was such high calorie. Because we're in oh. an alternate yeah. dimension. Yeah. I add that okay. to my dimensional montage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I will. I will open up my app and look at where I dropped the pin for where we came through the door. Um, mm -hmm. You see it clearly. You believe that you can follow your app back to it. All right, let's navigate ourselves back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. uh, do we? Are we taking? Are we also now rescuing Satanus Beelzebul and Asmodeus? We have yes. absolutely. It would absolutely. Cause we'll wreak interdimensional here. chaos if we left these dogs here. We have to reset, yes. re reset the balance. Okay. Uh, the uh, I will then just listen in on the uh, conversation between <laughs> Arpington. <laughs> <laughs> As we walk back, we'll yes, we'll, we'll let Jared let, just uh, tell uh, us a story. Jared, what are they saying to each other? <laughs> you fellows certainly left me in the lurch back there. Because <laughs> you only learn to speak corgi, not pit bull. Mm -hmm. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I, uh -huh. I've never cast aspersions on your mother, and I thank you to lend me the same courtesy. So three are, angry pit bulls being dragged across town. <laughs> you're a vulgar <laughs> lot, aren't you? Why don't you return to the docks and throw yourselves in? Um, Jeez. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> There's only uh, one wow. way to assert dominance over another dog, Lord Arfington. You're right. Ritual combat. I hesitate to do it, <laughs> but here we go. Uh, and he uh, stretches to try to sniff Asmodeus's nether regions. <laughs> Mount him. Mount soon, him. Soon you arrive no. just outside Boys. of the parking lot of Big Rico's Pizza. <laughs> the sky above you looks completely clear, but the <laughs> but the pin that that Noah left on their app says that the dimensional portal is right above you. It's here. Okay, so how do we reveal it? And suddenly, um, I, a big black car comes screeching into the Big Rico's Pizza's parking lot. The door flies open, and a man in a black suit comes out and says, Invaders! I must immediately engage! And pulls no, out stop! Giant We're trying to leave! on a giant machine gun <gasps> uh, and starts firing it in every direction. <laughs> what do uh, you do? Scary. Um, oh no, and I already used my one time ability to, I can't give us a cool shield or anything. I've got a fire ax. Um, I have an ability called leader in crisis. 
A true leader is ready for multiple issues and always has an answer for every question. You can set up a number of contingency actions as free actions for your social essence score. Uh, I would like to activate that and pull out. It's like a diplomatic immunity card, but it's dimensional immunity card, <laughs> which I will then use oh. to make an argument to this guy that we actually have bureaucratic permission and we are not illegal aliens invading, but allowed to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's exactly how the ability works. It's you not. Uh. We have nine <laughs> minutes. It's <laughs> not. It's <laughs> not. Uh, I did you. not present you with a series of contingencies before we began play, which I believe is the assumption with this particular perk. I, I love the creativity of it, though. So if you can be heard over this guy's wild machine gunnery, then you can then you can make this happen. How? What skill are you using? Uh, the skill I'm going to use is uh, performance drama, uh, which is how I do my uh, my legal uh, presentations. And to make myself heard, I will speak in five voiced unison. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. I'm gonna using call that a, the diaphragm. An unmodified role because it's. That was, some of that stuff would have given you advantage, but you're also having to scream over the bullets flying from his gun. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then I will also use my perk, Capable of Anything. Uh, my past does not define me. It's made me stronger. Once per scene, I can gain an edge on any skill test of my choice. So I will give myself edge on this roll. Oh, okay. my gosh. Uh, so a 17 and a 4 on my D4, which I guess makes it a crit, if that succeeds. Um, so, it is a crit, and yes. uh, the uh, the vague yet menacing government agent uh, suddenly stops firing. Uh, luckily, he was unable to control the gun and never fired it directly at you. <laughs> Thank goodness. He walks up and takes a look at the card and goes, oh, forgive me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for you. You've, uh, Fired your gun and the commissioner of your job. Discharged a firearm. Which means yeah. you need to go find so every paperwork. one of those bullets. A Tommy gun really is going to make this take a while. Uh, so, I guess good luck. Uh, all right, uh, I'm going to look around for these bullets. Wait, before you do, do you know how to open the doorway up here to the other dimension? Yeah, we were just leaving. He looks at you very meaningfully and goes, "There is no doorway to another." Oh wait, you have a pass. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I would just get like a step ladder or uh, yeah, just like a ladder or something. Yeah, a okay. ladder Maybe would Rico's. probably do it. Um, okay, I'm I just gonna go see if I can, I can borrow floats. one from Rico's. And well, hold on. Or I had this spool of coaxial cable. If I can <gasps> jump straight up into the portal, yes, I'll I'll pull you all each up perfect. with the cable. It's perfect. Um, I love that. Um, okay, give me an athletics roll, Jeremy. Okay. I this would like to assist played. him. I have a perk. I have a perk called lesson plan because I am a teacher by trade, a school haze. Um, I, my passion for instructing allows me to inspire them to achieve greatness. I am lending assistance to you for a non-combat skill test. You get both an up one and edge. Ooh, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah, some it's cool a great, ability. It's a great so work. I'm going to help you find the trigonometric angle. So that if we calculate the angle of elevation to the door, then I'm thinking it's going to be Sokotoa, you know, sign opposite over hypotenuse. So um, uh, then uh, I think you got this. I got this. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Okay, here I go. <laughs> and I just defy gravity and leap up. That's my boy. Uh, okay. Uh, that's going to be a 21. That yeah. is plenty. And soon, uh, Jeremy Stackhouse is uh, in another dimension. You find yourself floating in the dog park, but the coaxial cable is, is going through the oak door down to where your friends are, and you're all climbing up the coaxial yeah. cable, and Noah is through, and Peg is through, but our heaviest, uh, and to the tune of over a ton, uh, yeah. <laughs> a, a party member, Cormac is climbing up the coaxial cable when he hears, wait a second, this is a pass to transfer to different dimensions from another dimension. Cormac, try and pull 
Can we all start like trying to yeah, work together pull? to pull up the Guys, cable? It's only nine feet up. I can literally, I don't need the coaxial cable. I reach up, I grab it, and I pull my body up. I'm, I'm very Oh, you're tall. 15 feet tall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, don't bother rolling. <laughs> because I'll, the I'm gonna very like, real like physical right considerations <laughs> of being a giant five-headed dragon are uh, uh, trump any role you could make. Uh, and uh, <laughs> our we all agree. Cor- yes. Yes. We all yes. Agree. Yes. yes. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yes. Cormac totally. O'Sullivan yes. crosses over through the dimensional portal and lands with a thump outside the plain freestanding oak door, and you find yourselves back in the dog park. All right, heads down, uh, south, east by east. Is that the way out of here? Mm-hmm. That's right. Or yes. by south. Um, you have Lord Arfington with you, Asmodeus, Satanus, and Beelzebub. Oh, yes, above. the other dogs. All uh, the dogs. And um, you uh, are heads down, passing an area where you hear the sound of a lot of purple lightning. Uh, <laughs> When Asmodeus starts going, roof, 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 roof. Uh, uh, I oh will no. try and They'll know there's use a dog my in the animal park. handling <laughs> to uh, say, uh, to, to tell him to stop barking. No bark. Okay, use your animal handling. <laughs> Where's my D4? I lost it. Okay. Oh. Wait. Oh, no. We, we have all these story, these story points we're not using. Can I what use, use oh, my story yeah. point to re-roll? Um, yeah. You, you, uh, uh, now wait. That no, was a slow ten. down. Uh, story point isn't a, a straight re-roll, okay? Oh. Uh, it is, yeah, what can uh, I use it for? Uh, let me tell you, okay? Thank you. Um, okay. It can be used to... Uh, if you fumble, which is a rolling oh. a one, it can yeah, be used in uh, an initiative. It can uh-huh. be used uh, if the player has an ingenious idea that moves the plot. Oh, that's how you earn one. God damn it. Here's how you spend them. Reroll any die result of a one. Roll a skill test as if specialized. Add plus oh. five to any defense or gain access to a minor piece of equipment. Oh, well, that's what we should have done for your little <gasps> card, Cormac. Consider one spent. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't roll any one, so I can't re-roll. Uh, that is just a 10 total. The dog attacks the hooded figures. The hooded <gasps> figures oh! immediately oh. abandon the obelisk to deal with the dog. Uh, in fact, even though two of the hooded figures could definitely handle the dog, all of the hooded figures are now talking to the dogs, <laughs> petting them, uh, <laughs> no, trying to play with no, them. Oh no. <laughs> Purple lightning Focus, shoots and gouts from the black stone obelisk, and the entire world is consumed in a no. ball of eldritch fire. You no. have failed. No. You have no. failed the no. because of that animal no. handling. <laughs> You have doomed Night Vale and the entire dimension. You weren't supposed to enter the dog park. (laughs) There was a sign. There There was was a sign sign. clearly posted. Clearly posted. God damn it. As we all slip into world destruction, Noah will just look at Peg and say, I failed you, Mom. Fade to black. (laughs) And indeed, a fade to black there. That has been our very strange foray into Welcome to Night Vale. Um, We hope you uh, enjoyed it, viewers. Uh, That backer kit is going to be out on September 17th. It's from Renegade Game Studios. We are so happy that they sponsored this stream. Thank you guys so, so much. And thank you to my incredible players, Clint Trucks, Matthew Capitacasa, Mary Lou, and Paula Deming. You guys made this so fun. Thank you. You thank did. You. Thank Having you. us, Thanks, Jared. Jared. Yeah. All right. And we'll see you uh, next time, listeners. Bye-bye. Bye forever. Bye. Bye. Sorry we destructed the world. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> It'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>